Great. We are recording. Okay. Again, I just want to thank you guys for being here. I know that an hour out of your busy schedule is a lot to ask, and I so promise that I will honor that with giving you guys tons and tons of content. I know that you guys are going to find some valuable resources in this. Um, in case you haven't noticed, yes, I have very much of a thick um, Texas accent, and um, you guys will hear that quite often. But this is a, this is a one-hour call. We're going to share a really great, um, a lot of really great content over the first forty-five to fifty minutes, and then we're going to have a Q and A session, usually for about ten to fifteen minutes. Um, we are, like I said, going to open the call at the end, but the cool thing about this technology, this is actually the first time I'm using this particular um, technology. This is GoToWebinar. If you guys will look on your control panel, toward the bottom, there is a button for um, questions, and anytime that you have a question um, during the entire presentation, feel free to type your question in there. Just know that I will um, get to all of them at the end of the phone call. Um, the second thing I want to bring your attention to is two lines below questions is one that says handouts. If you guys will click um, your little down arrow on handouts, it says Master Chef Worksheet Materials. Um, what that is for is this is going to be a very interactive webinar. And if you choose to do it, which I hope that you do, um, you guys, there's some worksheets that we're going to go over that have um, to do with the topics that we're talking about today. And really, it's beneficial for you to go ahead and fill those out um, afterwards, or even if you can print them out now. Um, while you're listening to the webinar. Either way, whatever makes sense for you guys, but you guys will have the recording so you can go back and then fill them out later. But those worksheets are really going to be crucial to um, your path and planning your 2016 goals. Um, you must be, um, any questions that you want to ask, you must type those in there. And uh, hopefully all of you guys can see the slides well also. So, as I said, 15, about 50 minutes of instruction and uh, how to get the business and the revenue you want in 2016. Again, last 10 to 15 minutes is all going to be about Q&A. Who is this for? You know, I know that you're a chef or a culinary professional, but I really wanted to let you know that... Um, this, I created this webinar as well as my other programs because as culinary business owners and chefs, I know that you guys get really tired of your business running you. And I hear so often that I work and I work and I work, but I'm just not making the money that I really want to work, that I really want to make. And, or maybe you've been bumping your head against the ceiling and you just don't know where you need to go from here. Or um, you've been at a certain income level and you're just wondering what's next? How do you take it to the next level? I often hear the things when I work with other chefs too is I just, I just keep spinning in circles and I just don't know what to do next. So what this particular webinar is, is for you. If any of those make sense to you and you want to move beyond having one or two really big customers that if you were to lose them, you wouldn't have a clue what to do. You would seriously worry about your business. That's why I created this webinar, because I hear those things all the time. But what I also hear is that people just don't know how to plan. They need that roadmap or they need that path in order to get them there. A little bit about me, my story. Um, I started in culinary 15 years ago after being a licensed physical therapist, which I still am. I specialized in uh, sports medicine. And I just realized that I saw a huge connection between um, people's nutrition and their ability to heal, to heal. So I was working out one day. I had small children and I read about being a personal chef and I thought, 
that was going to be ideal, that I would just cook for a few people and I would get to stay home with my kids and life would be awesome. Well, as fate would have it, 15 years later, one client turned into 40. And um, yes, you heard me right, 40. I've had, um, this is my fifth business in culinary. I've kind of reinvented it over 15 years to include a restaurant because I think all chefs at some point want to get that out of their system. And I, um, I certainly did get that out of my system. So currently I have Saver Culinary Services. Um, we cook for an average of about 25 to 30 clients a week. So we have five to six families a day that we cook for. for. We usually do two to three caterings a week. Um, and then we also have a line of vegan raw juice cleanses. So I actually have three companies now. I have Saver, which is the personal chef and catering company. And then I also have um, Chef Deb, which is the mentor and coaching for other culinary business owners and chefs across the country. And I have Nosh Detox. So all of that has given me a vast array of, as you can imagine, lessons learned. I've either built or managed um, or rented probably about seven commercial kitchens in that time. I'm currently working on a uh, brand new concept for the fitness industry around food. It's a concept to build out with a uh, couple of investors that uh, I'm super excited about. So you guys will actually see more. Um, it says that I have a staff of five and have actually I have a staff of probably six at this point. Um, I have a head chef and kitchen manager, two other chefs, um, a full-time kitchen assistant, part-time kitchen assistant, delivery driver, um, the most amazing marketing person you can ever imagine. And I say that not because she's on this call, but I truly am so blessed to have her. And, um, then I also have somebody that runs my office. So I've truly created a business that, uh, I can step away from and lay on a beach if I want to somewhere, which was one of my goals to do. Um, about 18 months ago, actually no, about two years ago, I invested heavily in coaching, um, invested more money than um, would probably you guys could imagine and would keep you up at night. And I had a goal of um, 18 months ago of making my business a half a million dollar business. And um, I'm proud to say as of um, the end of 2015, I accomplished that, but exceeded it by about $70,000. So my goals this year um, are to exceed that by $250,000. And um, what I'm going to teach you guys is the things that I have used in order to do that. Who I help um, and who I hope that this webinar helps that I help culinary professionals all over the United States and Canada. Um, as you guys know, um, chefdeb.com is all about helping chefs to grow their business. Regardless of what stage of business that they're in, I um, meet with them. We put goals in place. We help them to stop spinning in circles and really build the business of their dreams. So many times we are told from culinary school that you can only work in a, um, in a restaurant in somebody's line. And, um, I'm definitely out to change that in the food service industry. I truly want chefs to know that they can have the business in their, of their dreams, have an amazing life and make the money that they are absolutely looking for. As you guys know, through the previous story, um, I've definitely experienced my own success and failures, as you can imagine, with everything that I told you about. Um, I completely understand just about every aspect of the culinary industry, and uh, I've certainly spent thousands of dollars on business coaching and uh, helped to turn all those passions into a lot of profits. But I want to share something with you guys um, and there's a formula that I came up with, um, to really know what success looks like. You have to have the skill set plus the assets and more than anything, the mindset in order to really accomplish your goals. Those three things equal success. Without those three things, success is kind of hard to reach. 
I say mindset because 90% of business is all about mindset. 10% is skill, but you still have to have skill. But what I've noticed along the way is the asset portion of it. You have to invest money to make money. You have to get out of your way a lot of the time. What I want to make sure and tell you guys, though, is I'm going to give you a ton of content on this call that you can use right away to include the worksheets that I talked about. But I can only cover so much in this 60-minute call. Most likely, you're going to want to take it a little bit further or have questions or want more information. I'm going to let you know a little bit more about that at the end. So right now, I just really want you guys to sit back, relax, and focus on some really great content. So the first thing that we're starting with is something called the vicious cycle of business. Let me tell you a little bit about that. So, so many times when you make a decision about your business, you go into this mode of thinking. A lot of chefs actually say in this thinking mode, in what I like to call analysis paralysis. They don't ever seem to move forward past that. Well, every business began with a thought, which is very true, but then you have to move from thinking to planning. Some chefs get stuck in the planning stage, and again, there's no action. Then they'll go back and think about it, then they'll go back and plan about it. But then you move into action, full force. Some chefs and other business owners go from straight, from thinking to action, thinking to action, thinking to action, and then they wonder why things fail. Maybe it was because you tried to put a certain sauce out to the world. Maybe you decided to do cooking classes for the first time. Maybe you decided to do nutrition education for the first time. Maybe it was catering. Then the next thing that should be happening is review. Once you've put your new product or service out to the world, did you review it? Did you sit down and give an honest opinion of, did it work? Did it not work? How many people actually bought this? So let's start at the top with thinking. As far as thinking is concerned, and it looks like that I just broke up a little bit. So if you guys miss something in there and have a question, please um, leave it in the questions portion. But um, let's start with the thinking portion of it. A lot of times it helps if you'll have a thinking partner, a mastermind group, a business partner, a friend or something. Get a whiteboard. Get it all out of your head. Ask other people about your opinions. But a lot of times, you have to really go into a solitude type of mode to really think about what you want to do. If you guys as business owners don't ever take some time by yourself, whether it's a weekend, 30 minutes in the morning, or even a entire day to really think about your business, you need guys need to consider doing that. No distractions, no kids, no clients, no barking dogs. The next thing that should happen is you should really go into the planning mode. Document everything. Grab a team together, even if it's your best friend or your partner. Grab them together and plan. Plan out the pros, the cons, the, the process. Chart it all out. Great whiteboards. Those huge sticky notes are amazing for these types of things. I have a whole whiteboard wall in my office. Next is the action stage. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but money likes speed. The faster you make decisions, again, instead of that analysis paralysis and waiting until it's perfect, the more money you can make. You have to give yourself a deadline of when you're going to implement it. Grab a calendar and write it out there. Whatever it is that you need to do, get that done. Next is review. The review process is so crucial. Like I talked about, have your metrics, have your results. Go back into the thinking mode of it. Even your current business now, your current offerings, if you have a personal chef business, whiteboard this out. Go through it. 
thinking, planning, action, and review. Again, so many people go from thinking to action, thinking to action, or thinking to planning and thinking to planning that nothing ever really gets done. What are your results? What results do you want before you start this? Use this process to find out if you should really put something out there or if you should make something better. The next thing that we're going to cover is core values, purpose, and a brand promise. I know there's a definition there that all of you guys can read, and it's core values. These are the fundamental beliefs of a person or an organization. They're your guiding principles that dictate your behavior in every action. At Saver, we have core values. And any time that there is a breakdown in um, something that goes wrong in our business, we go back to our core values. Core values include things like our customer service is above reproach. We also add in that we always respond to our customers within 24 hours, whether it is a business day or a weekend. They're that important to us. If you don't have core values, I would encourage you to list them down. Do a Google search. Find out a little bit more about core values. I'm not going to concentrate so much on core values as I am um, your brand promise. But your core values lead to your purpose of why you do what you do. If you can think back to when you first started your business of why you did it, the way that you wanted to be treated, it's your why in business of your core values that lead to your purpose. My whole purpose in what we do at Saver was I wanted to heal people through food because I was told that my son had high-functioning autism, severe ADHD, and he would never learn to tie his shoes or walk in a straight line. I was out to prove people otherwise, everyone in the medical profession, and I did. My purpose in what I do is to heal people through food. At Chef Deb, my purpose is to help you do food your way and allow other chefs and culinary professionals to break the mold that so many people have put us into and show you that you can make the money that you're looking for. Once you know core values and the purpose of what you do, there's something called a brand promise. That's just a really fancy definition or words to say, why do you do what you do? What sets you apart from all the other business owners in the world. Let me explain this a different way. If you get nothing else from this webinar, please get this. When I work with other chefs, they come to me and say, well, I have a personal chef, boutique catering and cooking class business. That's fantastic. What is your, um, I, I don't say it quite this nice, but um, who, what is your, who gives a crap factor basically? Why should someone care? If your business was up against another business and that client could only choose one, why would they choose you? What makes you so different and so special that you run your business around that core belief? Everybody following me on this? I want to give you a few examples because I really want you guys to get this. This is Chef Michael Wards. He's out of Austin, Texas. So Michael is an amazing chef, and he does really high-end catering. Um, he does things with foie gras dust and uh, caviar and molecular gastronomy. And Michael was struggling well, I sat Michael down and we talked about what's your so what factor? Tell me about that. He goes, well, I do really great food. Guess what? No one cares. There's a lot of chefs that do really great food. Well, what we figured out the core of 
Michael and his essence and what he is promising people, his clients, is the most amazing experience with food. This is just not caviar on a, on a great spoon. There's so much more to it than him. We had to build his business around um, marketing material and an essence and a feeling around his core values and his purpose. That we completely transformed his business. It used to be called SC3 Catering and Personal Chef Services. You guys probably don't even know what that means. But it was just a basic chef website. We turned it into the Austin Artisan and not a, he doesn't just have chefs that work for him. He has artisans that work for him. His website is full of amazing videos and pictures of people experiencing his food. We did that for him and his profits soared. One more example. This is Chef Elena Tedeschi. And she'd probably kill me for this picture because she's actually pregnant there. So um, if you know her, please don't tell her. I'm kidding. She probably won't mind. But um, Chef Elena, whenever she came um, to me and we started working together, she so wanted to go into business with her brother and do everything from dinner parties to basic personal chef services. But whenever I sat down with her, that's not who Elena was at all. She had a true heart for feeding people, but more so healing people. And she struggled with a very long time. We, we changed her website completely and um, she rebranded and everything. And Elena now, what we found out through working with her, through her values and her purpose, and um, now her brand promise is Elena actually loves to do food therapy. She actually has a background in that and she works with, I believe the politically correct term now is differently abled people. So all of her clients are family members or parents of differently abled people that want to learn to cook, to become more independent. She also does a lot of children's cooking classes as soon as she started living true to her core value and her purpose, she put her brand promise out to the world. What happened is she has clients that are beating down her door now because what she put out to the world was exactly who she was supposed to be. But we had to find out who she really was and then we had to tell the world about that. So I encourage you guys to do some work around who are you really? What makes you different? And it's not that you give good, good customer service and you do really great food. What sets you apart? Let's talk a little bit about your target market. I know that this is such a boring topic, target market. I'm not going to tell you who your target market is. I'm going to show you how to really define it so that you could use them to your true advantage. I was just in um, Philadelphia. I flew in there for the day to uh, work with a chef. And um, she, once I explained this to her and kind of got this out of her head, she had filled out worksheets before and she had been online researching exactly what a target market is. Let me help you understand what your target market is. Yes, it's all those things listed. Whether you've been a chef for a while or only for a few months, I want you to think about your top to favorite clients that you've ever had or you have now. Take a few seconds and really get those people in your mind. Even if it's only one, just do one. If you don't have any clients yet, then think about your ideal client. When you have time, I want you to write down the characteristics of that client. What are their ages? What are they... Male or female? How much money do you think they make every year? What kind collectively? How many children do they have? Do they travel and where? What kind of cars do they drive? Are they college educated? Yes or no? So any characteristic that you can think of about your favorite client, 
I want you to list it. Then I want you to go to your next favorite client and I want you to do the same thing. I bet if you put those two side by side, you would see a lot of similarities between those clients. If you really stop and think. Maybe your clients are like mine. Here's my clients. My clients are between the ages of 32 and about 45. Usually females that hire me. Usually at least a bachelor's degree with a combined income of about $300,000 a year. They go on le at least one vacation a year. And it's usually out of the country. Sometimes two. Their children go to private schools. When they go out to eat, they spend quite a bit of money going out to eat. They love whole food nutrition. Their kids are very busy in baseball and football, usually some type of a select sport. I hope you guys can see where I'm going with this. When I get really clear on my, who my target market is, what that really helped me to do is that helped me to then figure out how to market to them. And it goes beyond marketing. So once you know who your target market is, you have to understand that like people hang out with like people. The sum of seven of your friends, or pick seven of your friends, and whatever they make on average is probably the same salary that you make on average. You guys probably like the same things and eat the same things. No different with your target market. Find out where these groups of people hang out. You need to find out from these two people, a country club, do they have a country club setting that they go to? Do they have a particular restaurant that they all hang out in? Do they have, do they all live in a neighborhood that has a particular homeowners association that you could market to? This also leads to um, networking groups. Do not go to a networking group unless you know the people in the room that are other business owners fit your target market because they are going to refer you to their friends who are also your target market. If you have people in a room that you're going to a network group about with and they are startups or you can kind of tell by walking into the room if they're your target market or not, and you guys understand what I mean by that, I don't have to go into details then their friends and family members are going to be your target market or they are not. Think about your networking groups that you go to. Drill down to who your specific target market is. Figure out where they hang out. Figure out where you got your two clients that you love. Did it come from a Google search? If so, ask them what they Googled and then do something like Google AdWords since you know those that particular thing works. Look at your target market. Your answers are absolutely there. In your target market, there are three main audiences. People who will pay you directly. These are your clients. People who will influence the person who will pay you. Remember what I talked about in these networking groups and other charity events? If there are people there that are your target market, then they know people that are your target market. This is the same thing that during charity events, if you have a tasting station and they or they ask you to give an auction item, okay, as a donation. Check out who goes there. What's the price of the ticket? If the price of the ticket to get into this event is well over $75 or $100, then you know that that's going to be a room full of your people. If these are $25 or $30 tickets, Probably not a room full of your people. Try always to give a live, be on the live auction, never the silent. If you're on a silent auction item, then you're just name, you're just a name on the paper. But if you're in a room full of your potential clients that are your target audience, be on stage. Make sure they put a name with a face so that you can then tell them or point to them I'm sorry, point to a table while you're on stage and say, I'm this, I'm giving away this. If you want to know more about my business, I'm right over there. Point to it. 
everyone in that room will know where your table is and where to come find you. Secondly, ask for the contact information of everybody that bid on your particular item. That way you can then market to them because you know they are your ideal client. I personally do not give silent auction items because I never get a return on my investment. And normally if they ask me to do a silent auction, then at that point they're just trying to get as many people in there as possible and they are not my target audience. Let's talk a little bit about the life cycle of your business. And this is actually one of the handouts that I have um, given you that you can download again on the right hand side. I want to encourage you guys again to um, ask any questions or if anything wasn't clear. Um, I know that three of you guys so far have uh, asked some questions and I appreciate that. And I'll get to those questions here in just a little bit. I want you guys to understand a little bit more about the life cycle of your business, okay? A lot of times I get asked, what are all the components of business? Because it just seems like that that's a question that nobody really knows. So um, what we're looking at here is you're going to start at the very top. And the very top is lifestyle design. The whole reason why you create a business is because you want a certain lifestyle. Maybe you want a ton of money. Maybe you just want to spend more time with your family, but you want the ability to be able to say when you spend it. Okay. I want to encourage you guys just to take a few notes on this. Just jot a few things down, which each of them mean if you have a uh, pencil and paper with you because you guys are going to do some worksheets around this and I'm going to show this to you guys. This is everything that has to do with business. You're going to move from lifestyle design to vision and mission. Do you know your vision and mission in your company? We talked about that just a little bit. Are you clear on that? Do you have one? I know that it's probably in your head, but have you ever written it down? Put it on your website. What is your vision? What is your mission? Why are you doing this business? Are you clear on your services and product offerings? This all has to go, this all goes back to your vision and mission. Do your services and product offerings support your vision and your mission? Only you can answer that. So with your services and products, once you get really clear on those, then what about your marketing online or offline? Before you get all wrapped up in online or offline, think about your marketing as a whole. Could your marketing be better? Maybe you don't even understand what online and offline is. Online is all things digital. Offline is you showing up someplace, telling them who you are, or sending a postcard, something that doesn't involve a computer. What is your marketing like? How would you rate it? What about sales conversion? When you go into a client's home, or get them on the phone, can you convert that sale? Yes or no? Honestly, in the profession that, that uh, we have for most things that we do, usually if somebody calls me to inquire about services, I pretty well know they're gonna be our client. I have a 90% sales close rate. One of the biggest things I can tell you about that is I always assume they're gonna be our client from the moment that they call. I use words like, so when you start services with us and on your cook day and the chef fee that you're about to start is you know, $300 plus the cost of groceries or however it is that you do it, I never assume that they are not our client. When I'm done explaining everything to them and I go over the food questionnaire, I always say, what date are you going to start? I have these dates available. Your chef fee is this. And I just keep moving forward. I've realized that that has helped me more in sales conversions than anything. Number one, people feel guilty about telling you no. And they assume since you have so much confidence that your, pro your food is probably going to be pretty good too. Um, customer care. How well do you take care of your customers? 
do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your customers are well cared for? Do you follow up with them after you've done a first service to make sure that they are taken care of, that they're happy? Is there anything that needs to be tweaked at all? Delivery and results. Do you do what you say you're going to do all the time without question? And when you're done at the end of the day, do you know that you have given it your best or did you cut corners somewhere? Team support. Again, I want you guys to realize every thread that runs through this cycle has everything to do with your vision and your mission and your brand promise. What makes you different and why you do what you do? It's the thread that will run through everything once you know that. It will create such a cohesive company for you. Team support. It doesn't have to be people that you hire. Maybe some of you haven't hired anybody and that's okay, but you do have people that support you. Maybe it's a bookkeeper. Maybe it's a kitchen assistant. Maybe it's your mom. It doesn't matter. Or your 10-year-old kid that does all your Facebook for you. Whatever. Do you have the support in place that you need in order to run this business so that you are not running this business all yourself? Because you are not an expert in everything, and I can promise you, you won't grow unless you have some help. Case studies are customer testimonials. Those are so incredibly important to run your business. Those are social proof that you know what you're doing. Have you ever thought about whenever a client sends an email saying, that was the best meal I have ever had? I can't believe it took us so long to hire you. Do you ever think about returning that email and saying, may I use this as a quote? I have yet to have anybody that said no, but it is really hard to go back to clients and say, hey, will you give me a, a quote for my marketing material, my website? Your bottom line will increase dramatically if you get social proof on your marketing materials. I don't care if you love your website or not. Even go back through some of the clients you've had in the past and, and look, for, look for emails from them and ask them if you're able to use them. Referrals, cheapest form of marketing ever on the face of the planet. Do you go back to your current clients and say, hey, since you love our food, do you have friends or family members that would love our food as well? Never hurts to ask because the answer is always no. Usually, I get one or two more clients from this whenever I do that because if they love you, they will tell everyone. When you go to a restaurant you love, you go tell everyone. Unfortunately, when you go to a restaurant you don't like, you also tell everyone. <laughs> but remember that for... Referrals, if you don't ever ask, you'll never find out. Ask them. Retention, exactly what it says. How long do you keep clients? If for some reason you're not keeping your clients very long or you seem to be going through a ton of them, and I'm going to tell you, this can be a very volatile business. Some months are better than others. Clients go out of town on vacation at the drop of a hat. But... Whenever clients do leave you for one reason or another, do you ask them, was it my food? Was it anything that we could have done better? Document that. Keep it in an Excel spreadsheet. Go back and look for trends in that. But maybe they left because you didn't hold true to your vision and mission. And you just wanted money so bad that you were willing to do anything and everything in the food world but not what you truly wanted to do. Management and cash flow. Do you, do you know your numbers? Do you look at profit and loss statements? If you don't, no big deal, but start. QuickBooks Online is a great process in order to do that. Where are you making your money? Are you doing something that's taking you so much time and effort and you're spinning your wheels making a little bit of money? that maybe there's an offering over here that you've done a few times that makes you a ton of money, but you're just not realizing it. It is imperative that you know your numbers. For so many years, I figured I was making the money because I had money in the bank and I was just paying my bills and I didn't have any debt. 
but I had no clue how much money I was actually making. Of course, the more money you make leads to lifestyle design. It's all just one cycle. I hope you guys kind of get that and made some notes around each one of those things. Here's that worksheet that I told you guys about. And um, each kind of cog on that wheel that we went through is right here. You can see that your vision and mission is here, your service products and offers, your marketing, your sales conversion, so on and so forth. Every spot on that particular wheel is here. What I want you to do is whenever you print these out or maybe you have them now in front of you, I want you to rate each one of those in your business. One not in place, five needs improvement, 10 is exceptional. You can use two, three, if it's somewhere in between, but not in place, it needs improvement, or six, seven, eight, nine, if it's somewhere between needs improvement and exceptional. That's the first thing I want you guys to do is just rate it for your company, how you feel about it. If you have a rock star marketing um, team or process and it works like a charm, put 10 for exceptional. If you're not that great at sales conversion, put a one or two. After you guys go through this exercise, look, client customer care, delivery results, team support, referrals, retention, it's all there. Then what I want you guys to do is just go back and make some notes under each one of those if it makes sense for you to do it. Maybe an aha that you had or that you need to put something in place or something that I've set up to this point just really resonated with you. Go back and jot something down. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go back and I want you to look at your ratings. I want you to pat yourself on the back for the number of tens that you have. But then also I want you to take a serious look of anything that you have five and below. And I want you to circle anything that's five and below. What's going to happen here is you're going to start to put this next year in 2016, or wow, this current year, anything that's five and below, those are your goals for this year. Those are the areas that you are going to work on. This should light up like a Christmas tree. Anything over five, you're doing pretty well and can wait. You don't have to put your time and energy and emotion into those things. Put them only into things that need improving. Do this every year if you can. If you will do this, it will save you a ton of time. Those things that have five and below, you got to create a plan around it and how it's going to get done. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Okay, one of the last things I want to talk to you guys about is evaluating your income streams, okay? You're going to put today's date on this and your 2016 yearly goal. You should have some idea of what you made last year. And if you don't, I'm going to show you how to quickly get to that. But I'm also going to show you how to use this chart at the bottom of how to predict what you are to set your goals for um, this coming year as well. So this this worksheet that's in front of you now, and I know you guys can see the gray and the black areas. I want you guys to think about 2015 and I want you to put your services and your products that you offer there. If it's personal chef services, put it down. I don't want you just to put catering. I want you to put um, catering as in, spell that out. Is it dinner parties? Is it past hors d'oeuvres? Is it parties? Whatever it is for you, I want you to break it out. If you have cooking classes, if you do, um, if you have a storefront, and I know some of you guys on the call um, do have a storefront. I see that Kimberly um, Smith is on the call, one of my poster children that's um, that you guys uh, saw a picture of. <laughs> she has a storefront. She might have, you know, products. So, and I think that she will one day as well, but she does. She has a little bit of both. Put them all down. Your price point. How much, if you sell one of those things, is it worth? 
Personal chef services, most people, their average price, po price point is around $250, $300. Put that down. Catering, average catering has a tendency to run about $1,000 per service. Put that down. Cooking classes, probably somewhere around $500. Put it down under price point. How many do you do those? Um, how many monthly do you do? Okay, so personal chef services is my product. My price point, probably around, like I said, $300. let us say I do 10 of those a month, which means I then make about $3,000 a month just on personal chef services. I usually put that in that spot right there where it says method of delivery. I'll explain that in a minute. Then what you're going to do is once you know how much a month you make on that one service, I want you to multiply that um, by 12. So you know how much you made in a year. These do not have to be exact numbers. If you're guessing at it, then guess at it. You're not going to be too far off. Do the same thing for cooking classes. Okay. Each of your services that you do. If your cooking class is 500 and you sold five of them uh, on average a month, then you have $2,500 and then for the year multiplied by 12. I suck at math, so I'm not going to do it for you, but you guys get the point. When you're all done, you're going to add up the grand monthly total. That should be pretty close to the, to the sales, not the revenue, the sales that you had for 2015. Okay. You're going to look at that number and then you're going to set a yearly goal. I hope that you double it. I actually push the people in my coaching programs to triple it. You do what makes sense for you. But when you write that number down, that 2016 yearly goal, it should make you a whole lot of nervous or it's not big enough. What you're going to do is then you can go back. And you need to see what the difference is between what you made last year and this year. How many of each of those services do you need to do in order to get to your goal? Maybe you have to bring in two or three more personal chef clients. Maybe you have to book one or two more caterings. Maybe you have to book three or four more cooking classes, whatever sounds right for you. When you're done with this, you're going to know how to get to your goal by how many of each of those that you need to have for next year. It's very easy to bite off that way. If you guys have some questions about this, just please make sure that you list them in uh, the question section. I know that I went through that pretty quickly, but if you guys listen to the recording again, I know that you guys will get it. This is a very powerful tool to figure out where you were and where you're going and exactly how much you need of each services. The cool thing about this too is when I first did this, I took a look at it and went, wow, I have culinary nutrition on here and I've done none of it. But yet I wasted a whole lot of time wondering why no one bought it. I had probably about eight different offerings on here when I did this the first year. The second year, I had five different offerings. And this third year, I have three. I am only going to concentrate on three offerings this year. I'm going to put all my efforts into those three because those three will make me the most amount of money for the least amount of my time. So take a look at your services and offerings. Are you doing something? Are you carrying on? Are you um, maintaining a product or service that makes you no money? But it's certainly you spend a lot of time doing. Look what makes you the most amount of money and do more of it. So as far as strategy... You're going to break down that to-do list. Remember, you already have those things circled that you had before. 
the things that on the life cycle of your business that you really need to concentrate on? What are those things that are five and under? You're going to go back and you're going to look at your revenue streams and you're going to look at the ones that make you the most amount of money. And then you broke those out so that you know exactly how many of each of those offerings next year that you have to move into in order to reach your revenue goal. Now is the time that you're going to write your action steps for each one of those. Right. I would encourage you to take a blank piece of paper and write the services that you need to increase next year. And then also that to-do list for the five and under. Each one has a different piece of paper. Brainstorm about how you're going to get there. Write your action steps for each one of those. But the other thing is, write down who's going to help you. You cannot do it all alone. After you do that on each of those pieces of paper, I want you to write down what quarter they're going to happen in. So in other words, so that you're not so overwhelmed with all this stuff you have to do next year, break it down into quarters. Maybe in order to make all of this work, you need a better website. So quarter one, you're going to find a website person and you're going to keep that moving forward. Maybe you need to hire a kitchen assistant. So in quarter one, you're going to do that. But maybe you also need to do some Google AdWords or Facebook ads, but you can't do that until you have a rockin' website. That's going to go in quarter two. Maybe you want to start offering cooking classes but you need to do a lot of thought and work around that. That's not going to go to a quarter four. Break it out into steps. So you know what you need to do. You have your list of, of what you need to do. You're going to break them out according to quarters. And then each of those pieces of paper, you're going to write the steps that it's going to take to get you there. I hope that you guys can see by really breaking this down what's going to happen for you guys. You guys are really going to have a clear understanding of all of this. I know it seems like a lot, but do those worksheets and it will work for you. As you guys can tell, you have to have a roadmap and you have to have a strategic plan of how you're going to get to your destination. Without that, you're just, it's kind of the blind leading the blind. You don't ever know how much money you're going to make. You won't ever know what your goals are. You have to know your goals. You have to know those hard numbers, but you also have to know which step to take next. Believe me, guys, I have been where you are and I completely get where a lot of you are. Some of you guys are so far down the road that you this is this is so simple for you guys. But even the size company that I have, I still find myself spinning in circles and I sit down with these worksheets every single year. If I if I could show you my whiteboard wall in my laundry room, I would because guess what? Nobody ever goes in there to bother me cuz nobody does laundry. So there you go. Um but there's solutions out there, guys. There's everything from establishing your own um, mastermind group to getting help from the other members in um, your particular chapter. 